But let's start way, 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 way back here, around 1980. Um, it's quiet, very quiet. The war has just begun. And we mastering engineers, the first thing we discover is that we get a free 6 dB with magnetic tape, as opposed to uh, the, the uh, digital recording. Now, what happens is if we, if we record to, to 30 IPS, half inch with GP9, back in 1980 they didn't have GP9, but we'll use that as a, an example. Um, if we, or did we, did, when did GP9 come out? Okay, around that time, uh, we had GP9, and if I record to magnetic tape, it takes off without the kinds of artifacts that you get from compressors and limiters. It saturates, and it takes off the top 6 dB. Now, that allows us as mastering engineers to take the average level up 6 dB, just like the gain uh, makeup in a compressor, and um, and get the peak up to the top. Now that technique is called peak normalization. And uh, it, if I dubbed to 15 IPS, quarter inch with 456, I can get another 2 dB because the peak to average ratio of, um, of the, that quarter inch tape is about 12 dB. Uh, so again, I can push the average level up, and that's the last. What I, the art, there are more artifacts than there were with the 30 IPS, but I, I, for our purposes of our discussion, I'll call it a free 6 to 8 dB, just by dubbing to magnetic tape. Now, as time went on, with our analog tools that were available in the 80s through the 90s, we used some delicate. Uh, analog peak limiting, and then uh, to get, because the loudness keeps creeping up and up, we need to start using some more aggressive analog, or as the years went on, a, a digital compression became available to us. And we reached kind of a ceiling that, that didn't allow us to get any further, so uh, another, to, another um, and piece of ammunition that available to us foot soldiers was aggressive high frequency equalization because the Fletcher Munson curve tells us that if it sounds a little bit brighter, it's also a little louder. But now it's starting to sound a little bit ugly, I think. And as the years kept on, notice that the curve starts to, to flatten out, that we get less loudness increase for each of the tools that we start to use. And another tool we had available was um, as the, the last of the loudness rays started to come in was uh, digital peak limiting, and then we're already at the top, folks. So the next thing we, we try to do is some light um, digital clipping. We actually start doing things that, as, as engineers, they taught us never to do, which was to clip our digital devices which adds a certain kind of distortion, and distortion to the ear adds high-frequency harmonics, and those high-frequency harmonics make it sound louder. Now, this is not the kind of distortion that Ozzy Osbourne used in 1980. This is very, very egregious sounding distortion, but it's about the only tool left if you want to get these last three or four dB. And then we clipped our analog stages, so we let those things go, um, into clipping, and, and way up at the top here we have something which some engineers call shred. Uh, very, very, very severe clipping, which you heard on the um, uh, Black Eyed Peas recording. No offense to Black Eyed Peas, trust me, it's one of my favorite bands, but I don't think it moves my body very easily when it's <laughs> that constant in level. Now, these last four tools, uh, or, or weapons <laughs> that we had in this uh, loudness war um, raised the level up towards near the top and provided this kind of really horrendous sounding uh, distortion, 
But at the same time, they enabled new forms of, uh, of musical expression, such as uh, alternative rock, grunge, the dirtiest of hip hop, and uh, shred. So, you know, is that a positive thing? Well, I say it's the loudness war that, have, that, that helped to create these <laughs> forms of expression. But if we want it to be fair, the problem is that it's these, that the, at the peak of the loudness race was occurring just around the time when digital audio and converters started to sound really, really good. <laughs> so we're, we're losing some of that advantage and uh, all the dynamic range goes down. So the question is, other than, than to advance these forms of, ex of musical expression, why is it that we engineers are using, using these, these last four tools in our arsenal, or even the last five or six tools, if you want to get really audiophile about it. And the answer is, this client is telling me he likes dynamic, but he doesn't want to sound too low. Uh, uh, now, if he's that kind of a client, he might tolerate that the CD that I master for him be 2 or 3 dB below the, the hottest CD that's ever been mastered. But it, what we really need is 4 to 6 to 8 dB to get down into the sound quality re region.